Quentin Tarantino's last movie, The Movie Critic, has been announced and it will be released in 2024. Yup, the director with a foot fetish is making a biopic about the nostalgia critic. You can do the rum shaker, huh? The thug shaker? Give me the thug shaker, dude. Shake your ass! Take your hands off it and shake that shit! Since I am extremely excited, I thought it would be the perfect time to do a Quentin Tarantino ranking. Keep in mind, these are just my dumb opinions, you don't have to agree with them. So you know she's not just a guy from around here, you're actually whoa, a paparazzi whoa, whoa, whoa. guy? Nah, I can't do it. Yeah, you know you can mm. do it. Death Proof is without a doubt Tarantino's worst movie. First, the good stuff. The cinematography and editing were amazingly stylish. The music was great, the comedy was hilarious, especially with the ending. But the best part about this movie was obviously the action and incredible car chases. That being said, I do have one major issue with this movie, the characters. Besides Zoe and the stuntman, all of the characters in this movie were so uninteresting. Usually the best part in Quentin Tarantino movies are the characters, but besides the great Tarantino dialogue, I wasn't invested in and didn't care about any of the characters besides Zoe and the stuntman. Also, I am aware that this movie was made as part of the Grindhouse double feature. For those who don't know, Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez came up with a project where they would both direct a movie in the style of cheesy 70s Grindhouse films and then combine both films with fake movie trailers in between to simulate a well, grindhouse theater experience. So maybe if I watched that version, I would have appreciated the style more. But this isn't Tarantino movies ranked plus one half of a Robert Rodriguez film, so I didn't watch it. Anyways, Death Proof is still a fun and decent movie. Even Tarantino's worst is pretty good. <laughs> The Hateful Eight is great. Samuel L. Jackson is amazing, as always. Kurt Russell is funny and dark. Jennifer Jason Lee, Tim Roth, Walton Goggins, Demian Bashir, and Bruce Dern are all just great in this movie. And the relationships with all the characters are all great as well. The dialogue and writing are amazing, as usual. The music is incredible, and even the production design is amazing. This movie also has two of Tarantino's most idiosyncratic features, non-linear stories storytelling, and the n-word. My only problem with this movie is I personally think the reveal in Chapter 4 is a bit anticlimactic. Overall, this movie is amazing. Not as good as Tarantino's other movies, but still amazing. <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood has a funny gif in it. Leonardo DiCaprio does an amazing job in this movie. Brad Pitt does an incredible job in this movie, and his character is probably my favorite. The relationship between Rick and Cliff is amazing. And Margot Robbie is pretty underutilized in this movie, which is a bit disappointing. This movie is very different from Tarantino's other movies, because this movie is a lot more laid back. I personally loved the style change, but I know some people were disappointed by that. This this movie definitely has a bigger focus on characters and comedy than plot, which is totally fine in my opinion. The cinematography was so beautiful and I love those stylish moments when it would show a fake 1960s movie or show with Leonardo DiCaprio in it. The soundtrack is amazing as usual, the production design is amazing, and it does an incredible job at catching the time period of the 1960s, and the writing and dialogue are incredible, as usual. My only problems are, the tone of this movie is pretty inconsistent. Most of the movie has this laid-back tone, but the stuff with the hippies really threw me for a loop and it didn't mesh well with the rest of the movie at all. And I'm extremely mixed on the ending. It's a satisfying conclusion to a Tarantino movie, but it doesn't fit the rest of the movie's tone at all. Overall, this is an amazing movie. I can see why people think this is one of Tarantino's best movies, and I can also see why people think this is one of his worst. Personally, I'm in the middle. I want to thank my co-stars. Leo, Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie's feet, Margaret Qualley's feet, Dakota Fanning's feet. Seriously, Quentin has separated more women from their shoes than the TSA. Just like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Jackie Brown is a really laid-back film compared to Tarantino's other movies. 
there's not a lot of violence and there's definitely a lot more subtlety. Why the need for so much gruesome graphic violence? Why not let us imagine because a little Because it's so of it? much fun, Jan! Get really? it! The dialogue was amazing and the characters are incredibly well written. Jackie Brown was a great, complex, badass character and so was Ordeal Robbie. Lewis was a funny stoner character and his relationship with Ordeal was great. Ray was also a pretty funny character and his relationship with Jackie was great. The cinematography was incredible, especially during the assassination scene at the beginning. The editing was incredibly stylized, especially the split screen stuff. The soundtrack was amazing, except one song was a bit overused in my opinion. I love the plot being told through three different perspectives throughout the movie. And as I previously mentioned, this movie was really funny, especially the bag scene and the commercials on TV. This may not be as amazing as Tarantino's other films, but it's still amazing and heavily underrated. <laughs> Django Unchained is probably one of the most badass movies ever made. Don't be racist unless you want to get shot in the balls. Jamie Foxx is super badass as Django. Christoph Waltz is amazing as the Doctor. Leonardo DiCaprio is amazing at playing Calvin, who is this intimidating, racist, slave-owning asshole character. Samuel L. Jackson is amazing at playing Steven, who is just as big of an asshole as Calvin. Kerry Washington gave a devastating performance as Broomhilda. And Don Johnson is hilarious as Big Daddy. The cinematography in this movie is amazing. The dialogue is incredible and vulgar. The comedy is great, especially the mask scene and the handshake scene. Damn. I can't see fucking shit out of this thing. The fight scenes are incredibly well choreographed and violent. My only issue with this movie is that the plot just felt like Inglorious Bastards again, except instead of Nazis, it's slavery. But overall, this movie is incredible. <laughs> Reservoir Dogs is sadly not about gay dog boys. You know what this is? It's the world's smallest violin playing just for the waitresses. This was my first Quentin Tarantino movie, and what an amazing movie to start with. The acting was amazing, the dialogue was super engaging, the characters were incredibly well written, and I love how Tarantino purposely made the criminals all huge racist homophobic assholes as a way of saying you're not supposed to root for these characters. The cinematography was great and immersive, the soundtrack is amazing, the comedy is hilarious, especially the opening scene and the why my Mr. Pink scene. It's the Blue, Mr. Orange, Mr. Pink. Why am I Mr. Pink? Because you're a fat. Speaking of music and scenes, I cannot listen to Stuck in the Middle with You by Steeler's Wheel without thinking of this movie. And the ending and twist were shocking. Highly recommend watching this movie if you haven't already. Give me a Tylenol. Stop rhyming, y'all. Alfred, you got no style, dog. I'm the king of dialogue. Since I ranked these two movies right next to each other, I might as well talk about them both at once because of how intertwined they are. Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2 are awesome. Kill Bill Volume 1 is one of the best action movies I've ever seen, and I slightly prefer Volume 1 to Volume 2. Although Kill Bill Volume 2 is extremely different from the first due to it relying less on action and more on character and emotions, I wasn't at all annoyed by the change in tone. All the characters are great, the villains are incredible, the cinematography and art direction are beautiful, the dialogue is amazing as usual, the non-linear storytelling is super stylish, the action is incredibly well choreographed and stylized, and of course, the bride's journey through hardship, anger, self-discovery, and heartbreak is absolutely gorgeous. Volume 1 is just amazing and impressive from start to finish, and Volume 2 is without a doubt one of the best sequels ever made. Revenge is never a straight line, it's a forest. Highly recommend. Yeah, Inglorious Bastards is awesome. Don't be anti-Semitic unless you want to get scalped. Brad Pitt was badass and hilarious as the main character. Christoph Waltz was super intimidating as the villain and he is probably my favorite Tarantino villain. The other characters were also super memorable and amazing. And of course, the dialogue was incredible. The comedy in this movie was hilarious. The action in this movie was suspenseful. The beginning of this movie had me on edge the entire time. The overarching storyline 
storylines in this movie were all interesting. The ending climax of this movie was super satisfying. This movie is just an incredible movie about revenge, revisionist history, and war all stylized with that Quentin Tarantino flair. Watch it if you haven't already. <laughs> Yup, every good thing everyone has said about Pulp Fiction is true. Man, I don't even have an opinion. Well, you gotta have an opinion. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped- The characters are all incredibly memorable and well-written, and the incredible dialogue and incredible acting further enhances these already amazing characters. I love the relationship between Vincent and Jules, the relationship between Vincent and Mia, the relationship between Butch and Fabienne, and the relationship between Butch and Marcellus. I love the non-linear way the story is told and the central theme of redemption. The soundtrack of this movie is amazing, and fits the movie really well. The dark comedy is hilarious, and the violence in this movie is awesome and so badass. This movie's just amazing, and I can totally see why it's considered a classic. Watch it if you haven't already. Yup, that's my Quentin Tarantino ranking. And I still haven't come up with an outro for my videos. Well, I guess this will have to do. Have her